please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to this special show where we discuss the state of the Indian economy. And our special guest today is the Managing Director and CEO of Lordson and Tubro, Mr. Subramaniam. Mr. Subramaniam, thank you very much indeed for joining us, sir. Well, first up, uh, let me start with the guidance that uh, uh, Lordson and Tubro gave us after the results. Uh, the uh, CFO, Mr. Shankar Raman, was quite optimistic that the order book will grow by uh, 10 to 12 percent. Uh, can you tell us what gives you all so much optimism? Is it that you're getting a lot of government orders? Is it that private capex has picked up? Is it hydrocarbons? Uh, is it a bit of all these? What makes you feel so good about the Indian economy? It's been a decent year for us, 17, 18. And uh, we look to 18, 19 with a fair amount of optimism. Uh, so we have given a guidance of between 10 and 12 percent for order inflow growth and between 12 and 15 percent for sales growth. And uh, we're fairly confident uh, that this is possible as we look into the year. Uh, the optimism is based on the following facts. Number one, uh, the, the government spending, the public sector spending, the state government spending continues to see buoyancy. It is not only the government spending, but also uh, multilateral uh, funding agencies uh, coming into play in some of the critical core infrastructure projects. Um, the, the flip towards uh, developmental projects and uh, many of the states uh, looking into the fact that there's an election year and there's a and there is a need to do certain things and to show development and uh, three uh, some extent of uh, 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 revival of capital uh, ag aggregation in some of the core industries which leads to the fact that uh, investments are being sought out uh, more important also from our point of view we see uh, buoyancy in some of the other geographies that we are present in in Middle East, uh, probably due to the fact that oil prices are high and last one or two years had not seen too much of capital spend, we do see the requirements of capital spend both on the hydrocarbon side as well as on the core infrastructure side. Uh, we do uh, notice multilateral and line of credit spendings in, uh, in the continent of Africa and, uh, and, and a fair amount of developmental activities in Far East and therefore this makes us believe that uh, the guidance that we have put through is uh, within our reach. It's possible for us to go for it and that's why we have put it there and we are confident about it. Is your order inflow guidance a bit conservative given that it is election year and perhaps, you know, orders could swing either way? I'm just trying to understand whether you believe that you could even uh, sort of deliver a better order inflow than what you've guided for? I thought you were going to ask me whether it is very optimistic. It's an election year. Uh, is your yes, order inflow guidance is from less a, than from your revenue guidance? I think the other way to look at it is what is a backlog. If you see now, a backlog is nearly 2,63,000 crores, which is roughly about uh, three years of uh, uh, sales, or roughly about two and a half years of sales. That's a, that's a decent amount of backlog. Uh, what we need to look at is what will be the backlog at the end of the year when you look at the order inflow. To collect orders and not to execute is not an appropriate thing to do. So we have to balance both. And as long as we are able to have a backlog which shows a reasonable growth, and that's what one has to look at because if it grows beyond a point, then the execution comes into play or the execution ability comes into play. We have to balance that and I think what we have done is a prudent balance of order inflow and sales and I think this is the right way to go about it. I wanted your thoughts on the two uh, verticals, uh, uh, on hydrocarbons, now that we have seen crude oil prices going back to $80. Uh, uh, do you have uh, significant visibility on that front and also on defense? Yes, hydrocarbon has seen a turn around. Uh, my colleague there, Mr. Sharma, has done a fantastic job of moving it away from where it was. So we have cut costs, we have brought in operational efficiencies, we've been able to uh, get back to doing projects on time. Uh, we have brought in a good structure now, both in the upstream, midstream and downstream side. And uh, the business looks good. Uh, the business... Uh, to a large extent, as you are aware, depends on Middle East, uh, the, the key markets being uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, United Arab Emirates, to a certain extent Oman and Qatar also, and of course Kuwait. And uh, these are our traditional markets, we are present there. Uh, the, the certain amount of uncertainties in Middle East leads to slightly delayed decision making. Uh, but we ever we but we remain confident looking at the capital spend there that uh, that that business will continue to grow. In India also we've seen uh, uh, uptake of orders from ONGC, HPCL, 
and and uh, such organizations and uh, and uh, we also won some orders from adanis and uh, and uh, and and uh, ongc recently and therefore looking at into the scenario we feel that uh, the domestic orders will also be there the middle east orders will continue to come in and therefore overall hydrocarbon will continue to show the positive pitch that it is uh, going on right now now defense as i've been mentioning in many of my talks is uh, is in my view a permanent startup as i call it now we are the largest private uh, defense player in the country uh, as you are as you know we are into three broad uh, category of areas one is in the army uh, where we are doing the k9 vajra um, artillery guns mounted on the tank uh, frame uh, we are into strategic forces where we do much of the rocket casings and uh, boosters uh, we are into uh, naval shipbuilding and the submarine program and little amount of electronics so having said this uh, there would be orders from defense i don't see any major order coming out this year uh, but the regular orders on the on the systems and 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 the rockets and others would continue to come if we are lucky something could happen on shipbuilding uh, but uh, defense will continue to grow but it it takes effort and time to uh, to grow it and we are quite happy that we are there in the sector we it's, it's a national requirement lnt continues to be in business that are of national interest and defense for me is a long term view we have done well so far we'll continue to do it do, do it in the same manner okay uh, mr subramaniam the inevitable result of a long boom followed by a long slow down are write offs uh, you all wrote off about 16000 crore of orders uh, would something like that happen in your receivables you'll have large yeah. receivables will you inevitably have to write off some of them if yes how much is in danger let us the, the reason why we wrote off these orders it's not written off maybe one or two are written off but uh, many of them we take a prudent look twice in a year i mean we do it every time within the company every quarter uh, but we do take a look at it hard look at it during september and march which is a half year and the and the year end uh, some of the orders we had to move it away from the regular order book because uh, the the promoters did not have funds they were going slow with the projects they had cash flow issues and uh, and such other matters now the whole idea is from an accounting treatment point of view does not make any difference but from the company's follow up point of view the business follow up point of view continue to meet the clients we continue to talk to them and the project revise will continue to move them depending on the client's ability to, ability to play and so on and so forth it i think it's a prudent way to go about no, business no uh, mr subramaniam you have a lot of backlog and it looks no, no. Uh, good and impressive mr subramaniam some of it is not moving this is my point was not about the order write off my point is about the working capital the receivables write off we know about uh, bhujan steel where you all are still battling uh, uh, some bit of money that you that is due to you uh, i we understand that's also happened in visa steel and uh, then there we understand that there are some middle eastern contractors also who have gone under so you know your in your receivables are some of them in danger of not coming back no that there is first of all let me clarify bushen is subsidiary is right now so i don't want to comment on it we'll get to know of it shortly so let's wait for it uh, but also understand in bushen the dues to us have been recognized by the uh, by the nclt authority the question now is uh, how much of the dues is recognizable and got and whether we need to go through any haircut but we'll sort the matter out uh there are no other major clients on which we have to write off we do have the provisioning of ecl or write offs if if we feel the outstandings will not come but as we look at our pnl and as we look at our dues there's no other dues that are to be to, to be considered in this context let me also clarify in middle east we do not have any client outstandings which needs to be written off the most of the all, almost all the contracts we do there are with the government clients or with the uh, core government clients and therefore there's nothing that nothing that nothing of that sort that needs to be thought about uh, mr subramaniam can you throw a little more uh, you know color on private capex you did mention in your press conference that there are green shoots in private capex but how long do you think it would take before there is a major pick up uh, in terms of private capex it's a good question to ask uh, yes uh, we are now seeing a lot of uh, developmental efforts on the government side the huge infrastructure projects both from central government state governments as well as the public sector units we see some offshoots of uh, or green shoots of uh, uh, private sector capex especially on the metal side uh, some extent maybe on the on the building side 
uh, in my view it's going to take another one and a half two years before we see revival of major capital expenditure of the private sector side some of the capital expenditure, expenditure today is also going towards uh, bought out of companies on the nclt availability etc etc and therefore i don't find any major greenfield expansions in, in traditional core areas that we operate in and i think that's some time away Okay. okay, you know you have guided for uh, 18 percent ROE by FY21. Uh, that's three years away. Can you give us uh, some intermediate yes. target as well? Lata, we are given a guidance now, 18 percent, and we are on our way as you see it. So you will see it every year, and every year you need to ask questions. So leave it for that. Oh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just have mm. one more question on Capex. I, I I noticed you did mention a little bit about how government expenditure is picking up, but are there clear indications of higher contributions from uh, state government with respect to the overall infrastructure spending? And how is it now compared to compared to what it was, say, about uh, six months ago? I think you see some uh, more thrust on projects right now. For example, in, if you take the uh, uh, government of Maharashtra, we've seen the movement towards uh, trans link. The contracts have been awarded. We've been a beneficiary of that. We've seen the coastal road moving. Uh, we see the Nagpur-Mumbai uh, Expressway coming up. Uh, we've seen uh, spend on the metros within the city. Uh, we've seen other state uh, roads uh, coming up within the Maharashtra state itself. Uh, the, the lookout on the, on the new airport in Mumbai is positive. So you see expenditure, uh, uh, capital expenditure all across. And I can give you examples of many other states. So it, it, it's justifiably a, a positive uh, movement towards uh, uh, improving infrastructure. And I think many efforts are being made towards that, yes. Okay, actually, I was, that was going to be my next question to Trans Hub Link. Uh, for obvious uh, uh, reasons, we in this uh, studio are interested in when it will come up. Can you give us some idea of, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is the timetable and uh, by when the uh, Trans Harbour will be linked? Uh, I don't remember the correct contractual dates, Lata, but from our point of view, we already started the job. If you go to the, that part of the city, you'll find a lot of uh, small rigs uh, standing on the water and that's where we have started the site investigation and such. We got the land for uh, doing all the precasting. We are finalizing the, how to do the steel, etc., in Thailand. And I think uh, give us another three and a half years, four years, and you will be able to jump across the bridge and go to the other side. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> cut, any, cut the distance. Yep. Any more uh, any assets that you would look to monetize, say, over the next 12 months or so? This is an ongoing process. I don't want to enter into a commitment here. You know that uh, we are a predominantly a core EPC company with interest in manufacturing, defense and services. So that will continue to remain the core of the company and we're heading more and more towards it. There are other projects uh, that we have done and we, the idea is to have the LNT imprint there. We do the projects on time to quality, uh, put in good people there to manage, operate it. But at the end of the day, once we are done that, we have no further interest in that and then we have to move away to take the money out and put it somewhere else and regenerate the capex cycle. So we will continue to look at the proposition in, in that manner that is, that is what is uh, well, known of us, well known of us and we will take it forward that way. To commit that we will do it by this time, by that time, I'm not willing to enter that. We will uh, see how it goes and then do, do what is best from our maximizing returns point of view. Okay, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, ask you about any red flags. I mean, cost of finance, for instance, uh, Nabar could not borrow for one year uh, at 875 uh, or eight, uh, thereabouts, about four, four, five days back. Cost of money has gone up very steeply. Will that be a danger at all? I think that has been factored into by us. Uh, we are not a company which, has, which requires too much borrowings. Our debt to equity ratio as a core company is hardly 0 0.21, which is about 10,000 crores, if I remember right. And uh, as such, we have enough cash on our books. We are not looking towards any major borrowings. And therefore, uh, that should be OK from our point of view. You okay. did a bit of uh, sale of assets to Invits. Will we see more of that? Yeah. Not immediately, Lata. We have done what is required. I think we had, nine, uh, we had uh, we have, uh, put five roads into Invit. And uh, I think these are roads with uh, good returns, with good prospects. And uh, uh, we will take it forward right now. The balance of our roads continue to be within LNT IDPL. Uh, we have a partner there and uh, Canadian Pension. And uh, we will right now focus on that and see how to take it forward. There's no other 
Uh, there's no immediate idea to put anything else into Invit as of, as of now. Now, I was trying to figure out what is driving the margin upside. I mean, if finance costs are just about uh, moving up, uh, why is the margin coming so good? We are working hard, Lata. <laughs> okay. We are improving <laughs> operations. We are digitalizing the company. We are improving productivity. We are... Uh, we are reducing working capital. Uh, everybody is working within the company, <laughs> right? We want to make it more efficient and can more you, successful. Can you continue? So, so give us some credit for that too. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I'm, I, I'm more worried that can you continue because commodity prices are rising, cost of money is rising. So can you maintain the tempo? I think we are confident. Uh, this is an ever-learning organization. Um, there is a huge uh, 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 t t technology effort inside. Much of our jobs on the design and build basis, that means uh, our engineering comes into play to optimize on design and uh, quantities and thereby cost. We are uh, going forward on a huge digitalization within the company whereby you have online data to take uh, uh, decisions based on transparent facts and be objective in how we go about things. So a huge uh, analytics going on within the shared service of the company to look at many data to optimize costs based on machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I think all this helps to make it more lean, mean, and, and hungry from that point of view. So we'll continue that effort, yes. Okay. Uh, one final question from my side. Uh, uh, is BEML now a, a forgotten chapter uh, now that we have... Uh, you know, once again, the, the 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 incumbent government or you know the Congress JDS government. So, is the divestment now of the of the rakes, and uh, you think uh, you'll be out of that? Which is that? I didn't understand. BML Bharat Earth Movers. LNT was in race to acquire. The, there was strategic stake sale for BML, which was planned. No, no, we were not in the race at all. No, no, no. Okay. All right, uh, we'll we let it go. We have not looked at it at all. Okay, sir. We'll let it uh, uh, be at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Subramaniam, for uh, joining us today on CNBC TV18 and patiently answering all the questions and actually leaving us a little more optimistic uh, about uh, uh, India's infrastructure. Thank you very much for joining us.